What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Bianco Neri Zone uh, for um, a daily video on the Champions League night. We're not in it. Weird, because it's been a very, very long time that we're not in it at this stage of the tournament. Um, and we know why, you know, uh, we just deserve not to be there. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, but I'm going to talk about today's news, and that's Renewing center backs, um, and people might have seen the news, and I already got a few texts of uh, <laughs> some people who watch the channel um, texting me, oh, you must be happy, and I'm not really angry, I'm not, I'm actually a bit happy, and I'll explain why, uh, but before we get into it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification, as always. Now, um, Danilo signed a new deal, uh, uh, that was... It was coming. Like we knew this was going to happen, uh, but the rumor at first was 27, which was wild. It's 25 plus an option for another year, and he is gonna keep his current wage. That's that. Now, I, um, I have nothing against Danilo as a person. You know, um, I think he's a good guy. Um, players seem to really like him, you know, seem to really listen to him, to them, to him, excuse me, which is important because actually there, like, there is nobody else taking up that position at this moment in time. Like there's a void, somebody needs to take it. He, he took it, you know, and the club is also helping him in that case, you know, pushing the Danilo captain thing, um, very consistently, I uh, must say. If you follow them on social media, you will know. You know, the way he speaks, he gave an interview today, and that's why the title of the show is Lifetime Deal, because people might read the time thumbnail and be like, oh, what is this, clickbait? No, because he was very open in his interview, you know, the way he spoke about the club. You know, he speaks like he is a manager of the club, basically. He says he wants to be a manager, he looks up to Allegri, uh, he loves the club, City, Real Madrid, Porto, but a Juve, man, you un really understand what the real deal is. You know, some people might have gr cringed uh, reading that, but he says all the things a manager of the club would say, basically. He's saying that consistently, and that's why I said lifetime deal, because I believe that it's going to go beyond 25. Maybe... I don't, I'm not saying he retires after his deal ends. Maybe he goes to Brazil. I don't know. But at some point, I do believe he's going to be back at the club in some sort of managerial role, whatever you want to call it, because he's taking up that position. The way he's speaking, learning the language, uh, talking about the club and all those things in and around the club, talking about players, talking about things you know, the normal player usually doesn't talk about, you know, but he is very open. He has an opinion on certain things. And that's why I believe it's going to be a long term deal. I mean, in terms of at some point he will be back at the club. Not as a player. I don't know what, but I do believe he's going to be that. Now, 25. Do I have an issue with it? <laughs> Not really. Maybe the timing, you know, the season is still ongoing. You know, he has another year on his deal that you can question. 25. I would say, like, personally, I would have uh, preferred 24 plus an option because I, I do believe he's declining. And we have seen, you know, in other cases that a decline can go really, really quickly. And then comes the second part, his wage. I think it's way too much. I think it's just too much, as is my opinion, you know, for the technical value he adds to the team. I think, I think we need to go into a different direction in terms of wages. I think that's a lot of money for a player who cannot play his natural position because he just can't anymore and is shifting to be being a center back. Now, the flip side is Bonucci is back after 19, 90 days. We have no idea what the injury was because it's ridiculous because I remember at the time it was, oh, you know, let's see how it goes. It's been three months, which is insane. So what that tells me and what we kind of knew, the club will try to move him on in the summer. Will he leave? I'm not sure because he's on big money, final year. I have no idea, but I do believe the club is planning to do that. That's one. Secondly is Rugani. The club has been pushing him out of the club for years. He's still sticking around. Maybe this summer is the year it finally happens. 
Then you have two players off that list. Gatti, is he the answer? I don't believe he is. I think he can be a good backup. But then you are in, in, in big trouble because you don't have center backs. You have Bremer and you need to buy. And that's where Danilo comes into place. He can play that position, maybe not, not maybe not at the highest level, but he can play a decent amount of games against certain opponents during a season, in my opinion. So that's a plus because he can play it and he will play, it, I would say, very good, you know, for what's needed, you know. Is he the standard I want at the club, you know, player-wise? Talent-wise, no, not at all. But I also understand that you cannot replace everybody this summer. Like, it's going to be a massive task with all the free agents leaving and all those things players coming back it's going to be a mad summer you know and money being very low also not making the champions league next round and maybe not even making the champions league next season that's all going to impact our movements on the market it is now that being said it's 50 50 i i'm not a fan of the length of the deal and the wage i don't like i'm not I'm okay with him staying for a bit longer because of the things I said. Players leaving, not sure who you can bring in. It's going to be a complete makeshift again. I don't think that back line is good enough. You know, from right backs to center backs to left backs, all over the board, I think it's very poor. Technically, I think it's been the worst it has been since we finished seventh, those two consecutive seasons. It's very poor technically, it is. Like, if you go down the list, Chilio, Sandro, Cuadrado... Gatti, Bonucci, Danilo, like all those players, technically, talent-wise, it's not a great, it's not a great group of players. It isn't. So I understand that. So I'm okay with it to a certain degree. I still believe it's it's a bit too long, in my opinion. Also, maybe the timing. I know a lot of people have an issue with that. You know, he has a deal midway this season, but the club is pushing Danilo as a captain, as a leader. So it was always going to happen. Like it is always going to happen. So he's gonna be here for another. Um, two seasons, two seasons and a half, um, and that's the reality. Maybe an option for a third year, uh, for a third season after this, three seasons and a half. I don't believe uh, the club will actually use that option when we are in twenty twenty five. I don't believe it because I think it's only going one way with Danilo, and not just with Danilo, but with a lot of players that age. Like it is what it is. So that's that. You know, it's happened, and we move on now. That's one of the the, I don't want to say new deals, we were expected to be announced uh, very soon. And, well, Romeo and everybody announced it. Now, the second center back of the day is Hoysen. Uh, his dad gave an interview, I think, last Sunday. Uh, I think that at that point it was very obvious that he was going to stay and sign a deal. Well, according to Romeo, he signed a new deal, a new four-year deal. That it surprised me a little bit because we give Ealing an only a two-year deal, like a two-year extension or something like that, two and a half, which was a bit weird for me. I was like, okay, you know, he's young, low risk, you know, wages are low. Surely you can push for a longer extension. We didn't. I'm still not a big fan of that one because I think it's very, very short for the potential he has, the costs, and his age. You know, it's a very weird, weird deal what we did. But... Four-year deal for Hoysen is big news because he's playing well. He's playing very well for under-23s. He still needs to develop. I'm not saying throw him into the first team. But if everything goes to plan and his development goes as expected, again, it's all ifs and buts. But um, he's a player who can make it into the first team because he has all the qualities the only thing he's missing is a bit of physicality. Uh, but that's even what his dad said in the interview. Like, in the under-23s, that's what you're going to learn. Physicality, because it's a completely different style of football compared to the Primavera, compared to the Serie A. It's very physical. If you ever, if anyone watched Serie C football, most of the time it's very scrappy. Uh, the pitches are, at times, very poor. Uh, it's a battle. Like, it's a slugfest most of the time. And... That's going to help him. That's what his dad said. That's what we came to uh, to, to Juve, basically. And I believe it's going to help him. I do believe he's going to be the next one up into making it to the first team. And with the things I mentioned earlier, Rugani may be leaving, Bonucci may be leaving, you know, who comes in, blah, blah, blah. Because we need to get a center back, a, a good one. But 
there is a potential of seeing him with the first team already next season in terms of making a few appearances here and there, being on the bench, training with the, uh, with the first team more consistently. I think that's the next step. And he has potential. He has a lot of potential. Uh, and that's only good news. Like, that's what we need. So that's very positive news. You need to give credit to the club, Kirubini, uh, for kind of building this process because a lot of players are coming through, quote-unquote, again, not saying all of them are going to make it, maybe in a few years' times, only Fajoli is here, or only Miretti, or only Sule, who knows. But to have options out there, to see that players are having potential coming through is already a positive, because we haven't seen this ever, in my opinion, ever. You know, you had Marquisio, and you had Keane. You know, Jovinko, if you want to count it, I'm not going to count De Shelly, like these type of players, like real potential players. So it's very good news. It's good for the club. For the first team, but also seeing these players coming through, through is also good for potential new ones joining this project. Because if they see, oh, I go from Primavera, first team, maybe one year alone, and then uh, under 23s, maybe alone, maybe not, but then first team, you know, if they see it's possible, even for non Italians, it's only good news, you know. So that's positive, and I'll give credit to the club, you know, because they have done a fantastic job this far with under 23s because when it came bursting onto the scene everybody thought oh this is going to be nothing you know but it seems to have some potential you know so that's good news uh but yeah let me know in the comments what you think about the danilo extension and about the hoisting extension because i think they go a bit hand in hand uh for the future if everything goes to plan of course and yeah like the video subscribe to the channel i did promise there will be a live today but i remember there's champs league but people are watching there will be a live tomorrow for the preview for the non-game in the Europa League. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Ciao.